Well, we'll call this meeting to order. And uh, we'll put, uh, ask Attorney Rice to give her some whatever information she has. So uh, what I did here, I'm Ann Rice from the Attorney General's Office, for the record. Did you gentlemen have questions? Huh? I do, yes, thank you. Um, in our last meeting, the situation um, came forward that, in, uh, you know, with all the modern electronic devices that everybody has in their pockets, suppose somebody was standing on the sidewalk and, and was recording a police officer at, at a traffic stop. Is that person guilty of a felony? Um, well, it's, it's a, what you have to look back to is um, intercepting, that would be an interception of an oral communication, okay? So we'd have to look and see if, if that would um, fit. And the, the issue comes, certainly a police officer on the street doing an, uh, an arrest, um, the oral communication, what we have to look at is the definition of oral communication. It means any oral communication uttered by a person exhibiting an expectation that such communication is not subject to interception under circumstances justifying that exception. So you need to look at when, when the statement is, when the communication is made and what the circumstances surrounding it are and whether a person in those circumstances will believe that they weren't subject to interception. I think one of the concerns that um, you know that this bill originally came to is is specifically allowing people to intercept law enforcement officers in I can't remember what the, the original language was, but the concern is that by affirmatively saying in any circumstances they can do that someone can do that that it creates a problem for uh, officer safety and officer the ability of officers to conduct their investigations. So if we're out on the street and there is a, there is a, um, uh, for instance, a, you know, a traffic stop or something like that, and a person was standing off to the side and not being involved, and arguably that would be okay to, to tape report because it's happening in a public arena. The difficulty is how close do they get in there and how close do they get to interfering with law enforcement. Right? We're out on the street, and there is a there is a um, uh, for instance, a, you know, a traffic stop or something like that, and a person was standing off to the side and not being involved. And arguably, that would be okay to, to tape report because it's happening in a public arena. Memorialized in the police report, most people don't have the wherewithal to memorialize their settings conversation. So video is extremely useful. Um, it's, it's probably one of the most useful defense tools I have as a defense attorney is video of the actual event. And it's also something that uh, police officers seem to take great exception to. And they, there's a pattern. It's not an isolated incident, but it's a pattern, an identifiable pattern that uh, people will be arrested, their cameras will be seized, the videotape, the video footage will be erased, and then the charges will be dropped. Um, my client actually hasn't received, it was back in, I believe it was March, charges haven't been dropped, or the charges that were dropped long ago, and the camera's never been returned. So, my question is, so I'm not talking about an office, I'm talking about a public, like I said, public employee, public place, public duty. Well, I don't classify a, um, a police officer as a public servant. Well, I don't classify a, um, a police officer as a public servant. So, well, maybe the taxpayers pay the salary, but that doesn't make to have them give them the right to just control his life any more than it would give you the right, me the right to control your life as an attorney. We're not asking. Uh, well, my, my, I, I would never ask to control anybody's life, but. What we're talking about is a public duty, um, a very important public duty, especially to the person being arrested, is what exactly happened. The most direct and useful form of evidence is a video or audio recording of the event. Uh, it is very useful in court. And if the person actually committed the crime, 
then it's useful for the prosecution as well. Um, so if to say that it's controlling this person's life simply to um, try to make sure to make sure that the person who's facing serious prison time has actually committed the crime, I can't agree with that. Am I being recorded? Because this is definitely wiretapping. You're committing a crime right as we speak. This is not a laughing matter. This is serious. So, so I, I got to Are these insane people, or do they just play them on TV? I can't answer that question. I uh, sometimes I, I don't know if the situations and the exceptions that are being brought up are serious exceptions, or if it's meant to distract. Um, but I hope that the committee can tell the difference between the uh, very specific exceptions that they were talking about and the very general idea that public officials don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy when they're doing public duties in public. Uh, well, if the uh, reaction from the representative on the uh, far end is any indication, we can hold out much longer. Well, there's, uh, it's, a, it's a process. These things take time. Um, it's an education process, and I think that uh, I was encouraged to see that the, uh, um, the Republican Party added to their platform that uh, this change needs to be made. Um, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, this change? I'm sorry, a change allowing uh, public officials to be recorded when they're doing public duties in public is now part of the Republican platform. That's brand new as of last week. Uh, so I think this is part of the education process. Um, obviously this isn't a Republican or Democrat issue, but I'm hoping that as this process continues that more people understand this change is necessary. And uh, if it doesn't happen this year, it'll happen next year.